Hello, I'm Steve Tattersall with Antares Tile in Boulder, Colorado. Um, today I'm going to be installing the Quick Drain Proline Drain. That's their stainless steel drain body. Um, this is the only drain I'm, I would be able to use in this application. My floor joists are TGIs. Um, and any engineer will tell you, you cannot cut screw dimple you can't cut an edge off of these structurally um, engineers just raise a, a, a holy fit over it um, my initially I was hoping to put the drain along the wall here it, it just doesn't happen with this drain body from the top of the flange to the bottom of the trough you have one inch so with a three-quarter inch subfloor and your quarter inch backer it's gonna lay right on top. The flange lays on top of this and your backer and you're going to clear your TGIs. If the floor joists were running this way, I could use any drain that I want. Um, I prefer the shower line. It's much easier to work with the PVC drain. You screw it down into the subfloor. Um, it's a much easier installation than the stainless drain. The other advantage with this drain is that they have offset the downside flange. Um, on all of the drains, this is a 57 inch and it's offset also. The 63 and the 68 inch drains, they're in the center. But if you have a joist that's going to be in your way, you have the opportunity of turning the drain around, moving this so that you're not interfering with your floor joists. Um, so this drain width here is an inch and a quarter. I'm going to drill a hole for where the drain is coming through. I'm going to cut myself a trough here that's an inch and a half, which will give me just enough wiggle room and space. Um, because of this application, I'm going to have to attach the drain. I don't have access from underneath. So I'm going to attach the drain to all of my plumbing and make sure that I've got a little wiggle room so that I can lift it to get my sloping panels underneath and I can lift it to get my backer board underneath this flange from the other side also. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get my plumbing taken care of and we'll go from there. So I have the drain hooked into my plumbing. I left myself a little wiggle room and I can lift it to get my slope panels and my backer board from the rest of the room underneath it. Um, I'm now going to put up my backer board on the walls and then pre-cut my slope panels and backer that's going on the floor. Like I mentioned earlier, because the TGI floor joists are running this way, you can see that this drain is sitting on the joist. And if it weren't for the quarter inch that's going underneath it to lift it up, you would have to cut away probably just these two joists. But still, you're going to cut a quarter of an inch out of it, and uh, you just can't do that with a TGI. So you can see that I am resting on that. When the other pieces go underneath, that'll lift it up, and everything will be fine. So I've got my backer board up on the walls. I'm dry fitting these panels. They fit underneath the drain collar. You'll have your backer board on this side. These are measured to a quarter of an inch. On the uh, narrow end, sloping to one full inch over four feet. These are four feet by 16 inches. They sell the kits for a, oh, what, I think they sell them in a three foot and a, or a three panel and a four panel. I don't know, you'll have to check the catalog. But in trimming these, I put it backwards to the wall with a straight edge on the drain. You can see where the end of the lip is and where the beginning of the trough is. And cut like that. And you know you're right on the money. So I have all of my panels dry fit in place. They go underneath the drain. I still have some wiggle room to make sure that I'm straight to the back wall before I permanently secure the drain. 
I'm going to mix some thin set and use a quarter by one quarter inch notch trowel to put a layer of thin set underneath here, underneath my backer, push them all down in place. Um, also when you are, when you're dry fitting these, you need to cut the notch out for the two inch down drain from this piece. Otherwise it, it sticks out pat or close to the edge of the flange. You'll go to put this piece in and you'll find that it's not going all the way underneath the uh, flange on the drain. So I've made sure that my drain is parallel to the back wall. I'm getting ready for waterproofing and you're going to pull this outside layer of this green protective tape off, leaving it over the trough of the drain. Easy, isn't it? And after you've pulled this off all the way around, you'll get your butyl tape that's provided with the drain and you're going to install it a quarter of an inch on the drain and the balance is going to go on your slope. And you'll do this all the way around the drain. The Proline stainless kit comes with the butyl tape to wrap around here. It comes with two outside corners and it comes with four inside corners. And I like to use Aqua Defense Mape um, liquid waterproofing for waterproofing all of uh, the pan. Um, and they carry this at lows. Usually, they carry it at my lows. You'll have to check with your own. It also comes with a roll of the fiber tape. And the tape you're gonna put on the seams of uh, your slope. You will put it on in the corners and spread your liquid waterproofing all throughout the pan. We're going to do two coats. I'm going to do one coat, let it dry, do a second coat. I like to put a bit of, I hit everything with the Aqua Defense first, fold the tape, lay it on like you would drywall, put another coat over the top to make sure that you have it all saturated. Same with the corners and all the outside edges and walls. I also like to take the Aqua Defense and I'll go over all of my screw holes and be sure that I have a 100% waterproof uh, shower. And here's a little helpful hint when you're putting this um, fiber tape on. If you get a pucker like this where you're going over different levels, if you cut it, The one side will lay flat, the other they'll overlap, and you're going to be fine. You're putting a second coat on top of this anyway. Um, also I've done this where I've had a building inspection and they want to make sure that your, um, that your pan is watertight. And what I've done is I've built a second dam here. I've taken a 2 by 4 and put it up on edge and I've used the tape and I've waterproofed that as like a fake curb and that'll allow you to um, put an inflatable stopper in the drain, fill the pan up with an inch and a half of water, whatever they require, and um, you'll be able to pass coat that way. So I put a fan on this after my first coat. It was dried in an hour, hour and a half. I was able to put my second coat back on and um, I'll be placing the, um, the drain extensions tomorrow and the Schluter that my tile is going to butt up to next to the drain and I'm ready for tile. I'm going to tile this floor tomorrow. So that was one day between um, hooking up the plumbing, closing up the floor, slope, drain, waterproofing, Let's see you do that with a curb and pouring a pan. So I've opened up a little square on the drain. I've installed, I've cut my drain to length here before tile. I'll cut it down again after I get tile up so that it's a good fit. Um, I've opened up a little slot here on both ends of the drain, installed one of the spacer 
pieces on the drain so that I can see exactly where the drain is going to fit in this trough. I've cut my drain extensions that are going here on the end. The drain extensions come with the with the butyl tape. You'll put the butyl tape on the back of the drain extension. And then you'll use, a, this is a modified urethane sealant. Noble makes some. This is made for go board. Um, and you'll install your drain extensions on both sides. put my drain on. Now with these extensions your drain is still movable side to side. If for some reason you weren't straight in the trough you can always move it back and forth. I've also cut a piece of Schluter edging for here. I'm also going to put this urethane sealant on here. This is going to give me my capillary break so that any moisture that may be in this pan or anything that hits the drain will not continue into um, into the room. This capillary break you want to make sure runs along your drain extension and up the wall. I've taken a couple of drywall shims that I can use as a spacer along here so that I have the right distance and I'm consistent all the way across. And that's that. Um, the other side, I will not use this sealant. I'll just set the other Schluter uh, tile edging with the thin set. Um, because if there is any moisture here, I do want it to get past here and into the drain. And there's the capillary break. I'll do the same on the other side, and I'm ready for tile. So finished drain with the Schluter floor wall tile. With the wall tile, if I can, I like to notch it so that it goes down deep into the drain, into the extension, um, just so that the drain butts up against it rather than cutting it straight across here and having this void. Um, other than that, it's all pretty straightforward. Um, I've got my drain extensions in there to bring it up flush to the surface, and uh, that's a done deal.